Are you okay? You seem a little sad. Well, I rearranged the furniture, but I always feel sad when I leave Harold. I know what you need. To have a shower? No, you need to have a break. A few days away, at a beauty farm. <laughs> That's a good idea, Victor. Mm. Are you doing anything tomorrow? Well, I, uh, I haven't got anything planned. I'm not doing anything special. I think I'll send you to the Burbank Beauty Farm in Somerset. Hmm? Well, I... Oh, but who's going to look after this place while I'm away? I've got to clean the oven, vacuum the carpets, wash the curtains, and then there's ironing to be done. Well, Agatha, I'll do that for you. Oh, but you don't know where I keep the mop, the vacuum cleaner, the iron. Come on, Agatha, I know. I live here, remember? It's decided. Pack your bags. You're going to a beauty farm. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to call Betty now and see if she wants to come. I'm so excited. <laughs> <clears throat> um, it's nice being alone. Yes, just the two of us. Mm, what shall we do? We can move a little closer. But we promised Agatha we would clean the house. Well, we can do it very quickly. And I'd like to change some of the furniture while Agatha's away. She changed things without asking me. And I'd like this house to, to say something about me. It's not just Agatha's house. Right. Okay. Uh, chores now. Uh, chores? Well, what are chores? Oh, chores are the little jobs around the house that we need to do. Oh, I see. Yeah, remember, sweeping the floor, dusting the furniture, doing the shopping. I love shopping, but that's not a chore. Doing the shopping is very different from going shopping. Doing the shopping is food shopping. Oh, that reminds me. I have to go to the supermarket to get some housekeeping things. Uh, do you need anything? No, um, I'll stay here and start vacuuming. Oh, great. I'll be back in half an hour. Are you sure we don't need any special ingredients for dinner tonight? <laughs> no, Chan is bringing something from the international food store later. Not that Chang again. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. See you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to your English lesson. So, how about our sitcom today? Lucky Agatha going to a health farm. I'm so jealous. Anyway, let's look at today's lesson. We are going to study the future tense using going to. Then we will look at special expressions using the word have. Hmm, we're going to have fun. And finally, we will learn how to talk about household chores and appliances. Oh, do you mind if I dust the desk during the lesson? I'm joking. Then maybe, if you study hard, we can go to a health farm too. <laughs> so, the future tense using going to. If we want to speak about something that we have planned for the future, we use the verb to be plus going to. This weekend, I'm going to visit a health farm. Next summer, he's going to travel to Asia. Agatha asks, who is going to look after this place while I'm away? Do you remember? Let's see another sentence. They are not going to go to the cinema tonight. In this example, you can leave out the verb to go and simply say, they are not going to the cinema tonight. We can also use going to if we want to make a prediction based on what we can see at the moment. For example, if it is cloudy, we can say, I think it's uh, going to rain. Do you see? Now, let's compare this to the other future form, will. We use will when we want to make an offer. I will help you with your homework. We also use it with a promise. I won't forget to call you. We use it for predictions without evidence. You'll love the film. 
and for instant decisions. For example, if the phone rings, we say, I'll get it. Right, let's change the subject. We are now going to look at certain expressions that use the word have. In the sitcom today, Agatha said she needed to have a shower. Victor said you need to have a break. We have many uses for the verb to have in English. You can have breakfast, have a drink, have time to do something, have a baby. Wow! I think I am going to have a nap after all of this studying. Do you know what I hate doing more than anything else? Ironing clothes. It is such a boring chore. Do you remember what other chores Agatha mentioned? Cleaning the oven? Washing the curtains? Vacuuming the carpet? And then Victor mentioned sweeping the floor, dusting the furniture, and doing the shopping. No, not the fun kind of shopping. Doing the shopping means shopping for food and household items. It's so boring. To do these chores, you need an iron or a broom to sweep the floor, a mop to wash the floor, a vacuum cleaner. You know what? I think I'll let Dylan do the vacuuming today. I, I don't think I feel very well. <laughs> I better go and lie down. See you next time. Happy studying. Here's the tea. Can you pass me the mug? Now, tell me all about the beauty center. Oh, marvelous. It was a wonderful idea. The mud treatment was good for my skin, and the thermal baths were so relaxing. <laughs> you should try it. Did you have a massage? Massages and aromatherapy in all the rooms. I feel great. In fact, you should go there with Victor one day. Hey, what do you think? That's a good idea. Uh, so, it's not only for women. No, lots of men go there. It's a wellness center and a fitness center, too. I think Victor would enjoy it. I'll talk to him about it. Elena? I want to ask you something, woman to woman. Of course, woman to woman. What do you think about Victor? Oh, well, I like Victor. He's a friend, a good friend. I mean, as a woman. Do you think he's handsome? Well, physically attractive. <clears throat> Well, yes, um, he's an handsome man. Are you attracted to him? Uh, I, yes, he, uh, he's attractive. I, I like him. I'm a bit worried. Does he ever talk about his friends? Oh, yes. Uh, he often mentions his friend, uh, Paul. Paul? A friend? I've never met anyone called Paul. They go to the gym together. To the gym? What for? Exercise, swimming, you know, uh, working out on the exercise machines. I wonder who Paul is. Thanks for making the tea. <laughs> Give me a hug, dear. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Hi, Lena. Hi, Agatha. How was your day at the beauty center? Oh, fine, fine. Have you just been to the gym? Uh, yes, how did you guess? <laughs> oh, with Paul. Actually, yes, but you don't know Paul. No, I don't. But Elena told me about him. We'd love to meet him. Why don't you invite him to supper one evening? I'll cook him a special meal. Of course I will, one of these days. So, did you like the changing we did while you were away? Yes, yes, great! Now, Victor, 
I suggested that you and Elena should go to the beauty center together one day. Uh, me? Uh, to the beauty center? Well, it's for men, too. Oh. And there's a fitness center. Well, I suppose you're right. Would you like to do that, Elena? Yes, I would. I, I'd love to. And uh, I might invite Paul to come, too. No! No! Just the two of you. That's the whole point. Whew. Hello, everyone. I've just come from the gym. What a great workout. I feel so healthy. So, what happened in the sitcom today? Yes, Agatha started asking Elena what she thinks about Victor. Hmm, she really should learn to mind her own business. Oh, the word should is very important in our lesson today. We will be studying that, followed by verbs with two objects. Let me give you a tip. Our sitcom is going to end in a real surprise. And finally, we will see some terms and activities relating to wellness. Ready? So, Agatha said to Elena, you should try the thermal baths and you should go there with Victor one day. Remember, we use the word should when we want to give someone advice or make a suggestion. The word should never changes. I should, you should, he should, etc. And we use it with the infinitive. If you want to lose weight, you should do more exercise. She should go and see a doctor about her bad back. If they want a sheep holiday, they shouldn't stay in a luxury hotel. If you want to say that something is a rule or that it is obligatory, you have to. You have to fasten your seatbelt. He has to do his homework. They have to study English. Yes, it's obligatory. <laughs> now, in the sitcom, Elena said, can you pass me the kettle? This is an example of a verb with two objects. In this case, the verb is to pass, and the objects are me and the kettle. I can lend you some money. Will you give him a letter? We normally put the person first and then the thing. Give him a pencil. If the thing is a pronoun, it goes after the verb. Give it to me, okay? Now, what do you do to keep fit? Do you go swimming? Do you go to the gym like me? I love to use all of the different exercise machines at the gym. Dylan likes to lift weights. He also goes jogging twice a week and does kickboxing. <laughs> my mom does Pilates. She's in great shape. And my dad, he plays golf. All that walking is great exercise. What do you do to stay healthy? <laughs> well, that's all for today. Well done, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Can you peel the potatoes? Did you buy the steak? I'm starving. <laughs> steak and potatoes for me. Victor, forget the potatoes. We have to talk. You really should spend more time socializing. You must get out more. Go to the movies or something. But I have to prepare for my exams. Well, you can study during the week, not at the weekends. You must dedicate more free time to seeing your friends and making new friends. Like my new friend, Paul? No, no, I didn't mean him. You should take Elena out with you. She could practice her English. Well, I have to study a lot. It's my final year. I can't remember the last time you went out with a girl. You're not ugly, Victor. You do attract women's attention. I can't understand it. And you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Thanks for that. Where's the butter for frying? 
You don't need all that butter. You should use olive oil instead. It's better for you. I read an article in the newspaper about depression and the foods we eat. What we eat affects our personality and how we react to others. I know. If I don't eat, I'm not a nice person. Mm. Okay, I can't live on meat alone. Oh. There are the food groups. Breads, cereals, rice and pasta, poultry and fish. And you can't exclude eggs, vegetables, fruits, beans, milk. Yeah, yeah. You use too much butter. You don't have to give up your butter and chocolate biscuits. I'm just saying you should use less. It will help you to stay healthy and fit, and that's a good thing, isn't it? Sure. But you have to eat more vegetables. They're an important source of vitamins. I always have uh, tomatoes and olives on my pizza. Oh, dear. I can't help you. You should go to a doctor and have a checkup. That's enough. I, I can't take it anymore. You have to stop trying to control my life. You should respect my life and how I live it. I'm sorry. I just think that you should do things... You should. You shouldn't. You can't. You must. You mustn't. Not everyone is like you, Agatha. Thank goodness. I don't have to explain my lifestyle to you. Oh, dear. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> oh, did I offend him? <laughs> Hi, ready for your English lesson? Oh dear, things are a little difficult at the moment between Agatha and Victor, aren't they? That was quite an argument, typical brother and sister. Well, I hope they can resolve their problems soon. Anyway, what are we studying today? Well, first we're looking at modal verbs to talk about ability. I can sing very well. Permission? You can have some more candies. Responsibilities and obligations. I know you have to study a lot. We must go now. <laughs> Not yet. And then we will look at words relating to nutrition and diet. One of Agatha's favorite subjects. So, Victor asked Agatha, can you peel the potatoes? We use the modal verb can to talk about ability. I can make marmalade. I can't dance. Remember, I'm terrible. We also use can to ask for permission. Can I go to the bathroom? Can we listen to the radio? We can use can't or mustn't to say something is forbidden. You can't go out tonight. They mustn't touch the oven, it's hot. To talk about responsibility and obligation, we use the word must or have to. You must come home early tonight. I must go to the dentist. You have to tidy your room. She has to study hard for her examination. We use the phrase don't have to to say that something is not necessary. We don't have to go to work on Sundays. The concert is free. You don't have to pay. Now, can you tell me what the main food groups are in English? I bet Agatha can. We have proteins, like fish, meat, and eggs. Carbohydrates, like bread, pasta. Fats, like butter and oil. Fruits and vegetables, like apples, carrots, and broccoli. And as Agatha said, it is important to have a diet that is rich in all the food groups. A balanced diet with lots of variety. She also says that vegetables are a good source of vitamins. This is very important. I don't imagine that Victor is getting many vitamins from the olives and tomatoes on his pizza. Do you? Anyway. That's all for our lesson. I'm going home to make a nice healthy salad full of vegetables and protein. And then I think I'll have a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit. <laughs> well, I need a good balance in my diet, don't I? See you next time. Bye. <laughs>